Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Jonathan Allen here at Floodwater Studios, and today we're going over MIDI drums, how we can manipulate them in our DAW, and mix everything up. Let's check it out. Hey, would you do this sick guy a favor? and hit that like and subscribe button since you're already here. Go ahead and uh, tap that notification bell too. That way you can keep up with us all the time. Thanks. So here, as we can see, I've got Studio One set up and we use Easy Drummer 3 here in the studio. I've said before, we have the electronic drums over here to my left. Um, just because of how the studio is set up with neighbors attached on the wall right behind us. And um, so inside Easy Drummer, you can come in, you have your drums, you can choose your different drum sets for everything. And I apologize for my voice right now. I got some sort of sickness. I don't know where it came from. Don't know what's going on. I feel good, but my voice decided it's not going to be 100% right now. So I apologize. But so you go in and pick your drum set. In Easy Drummer 3, I really like the tight room drum set. Everything is exactly how it sounds really tight small space not a lot of reflection on things even the drum samples themselves they have them dampened so the snare drum it's not open and loud and resonant um it's really great so i love this sample set and i just went through into the grooves picked a bunch of stuff that i liked threw it all in one and here we go so this is what it sounds like just what i chose So a nice, tight, simple groove. Sure, it's busy, but it's still not overly crazy. Um, but how do we take the MIDI files and process them? Now, some can argue with MIDI drums. There's not a lot of processing that needs done, which a lot of times is true. I mean, they record these samples at a very high quality. Everything is kind of processed a little bit as it is, but there's still always some resonant sounds or tones that we need to get rid of, some frequencies that just kind of peek out for things, especially for snare drums. Um, a lot of people like to shape their kick drums still. So how do we do that? How can we manage each one? Because it's, it's one file. We see everything all together. Now, in Easy Drummer specifically, once you're inside, if you go to the Mixer tab here, it shows you everything is set to an output. So we have kick in, kick out, snare top, snare bottom, overhead kit, and overhead mono. Now the one shot shaker, tambourine, and percussion in this groove, those aren't used. So what I'm going to do first is just mute those. We don't need to worry about those. Don't need any extra data because there is none. But for the kick, snare, overheads, we're going to leave kick in at channels 1 and 2. Kick out, we're going to go to 3, 4. So far, so far, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11, 12. So now, if I were to play this groove back... We can see all of these are getting signal, but we only hear the kick. So let's address that. We can get rid of Easy Drummer for now. We're good with that. We're going to want to pull up our mix tab down here. And then we want to make sure we're on this keyboard here, which is our MIDI instruments. And then you can see Easy Drummer and it shows the instrument here. All you have to do is click on it and it opens all of the outputs here. So we went up to 11, 12, so we're going to click each one. And now when we play it back, we have the full kit again. So now with the full kit, we can start to 
you know, craft our drum sound that we're going for. Make those changes, adjust things. You have each one individual levels. Now, one thing that I really like to do in the studio here is commit to things. So because we play electronic drums, once I record something and I really love how it sounds and that's what I'm sticking with, I like to convert my MIDI to audio files. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So first, you have your your section here. Now what I want to do before I do this, because it carries over with everything, is just like I've said from the beginning, we're going to color everything the same color so we know that it's drums and we're going to label everything. So here, I'm just going to shift click, which highlights everything. This one I'm going to do kick in, kick out, snare top, snare bottom, overheads, and overhead mono. And we're going to make everything red for drums because they're aggressive. So now that we have it labeled and color coded, we're going to go ahead, we can close out of the, uh, the MIDI instruments. We don't need that anymore. But here, over on the actual track itself, we're just going to right click in here and we're going to hit transform to audio track. So this gives us a couple different options. First, it's going to render all the channels. We want everything under this MIDI session to be rendered. So we want all the channels that we've selected to be rendered out. You can render inserts. So if you wanted to keep your MIDI exactly how it is and don't want to render it to audio, that's not a problem. Right here, you can still add plugins, you can still manipulate things, you can still tweak things, add your reverbs, add delays if you're adding delays. Everything can still be added exactly how it is here. But if you convert to audio, you can render all of those inserts that you've put in, all of those plugins can be rendered into the audio file so it's all baked in. So you're really committing at that point. So for this instance, it doesn't really matter because I don't have anything on there. So we'll keep it on. Preserve instrument track state, which means the information that's here, it's going to stay and then remove the actual MIDI instrument. So we're going to get rid of that extra computing power. We don't have to worry about the MIDI instrument itself anymore. So we're just going to hit OK. Now this is going to take a few seconds here because it goes through each individual track. So if you have more than six tracks for your drum session, which a lot of times is going to be the case, it's going to take a little longer, but this one shouldn't take too bad. All right, so now that that has all been rendered into audio. You can see that waveforms actually showed up here. Before we used to have the keyboard saying that it was a MIDI instrument. Now we have the waveform saying it's an audio file, audio track now. So at this point, it's really strange because you can still see the audio or the, the MIDI file behind it. And that can get a little cumbersome when you're looking at things. So what we wanna do, and as you can see, they're all still named. So we know exactly what is what still. But what we want to do is we just want to highlight all of them here. Right click and then bounce selection. So we'll let this do its thing. It's just six tracks, so it should be done in just a second here. Now that it's bounced, all of the MIDI data is completely gone. All we have left now is the audio files. So now we can listen to it here. It's exactly what you've already recorded, just in audio form now. So instead of having the MIDI where you can still go in and tweak things, it's decision making while we're making music is always the hardest part because we always want to tweak something. We always think it's not finished quite yet, but when we take even this small step for anything you're doing MIDI and commit to that and put it into the audio form, bounce it out, convert it to audio, 
you've you've committed. You're going to have to go back and redo everything if you want to change something. So, make sure that you are committing to what you have. I can't stress that enough. Um, but even here, you can start to go in and time things if it's out of sync, you know, not in quantize things. And it's just like you do in other DAWs, same as with Studio One. You can quantize things uh, spliced up. Everything will go exactly how it should at this point. And now you can even get in there, get crazy with all your plugins, start throwing stuff on there, start messing around. But what do you guys think about this little trick? It's a couple extra steps, but it gets us to that committing phase where we can start to move forward with the song and move forward with the project we're working on. Let me know what you think down in the comments section. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe and then hit that notification bell so you know exactly what's going on here today with Floodwater, tomorrow with Floodwater, next week with Floodwater, everything. We appreciate you guys hanging out. I hope you have a wonderful day or evening whenever you watch this. See ya.